morning, guys. It's so good to be here with you all this morning and with everyone that is watching us. And today I would like to invite you to listen to a famous passage of the Bible with a different mindset, with a different worldview. We constantly, when we hear one of the uh, letters that Paul wrote, uh, we, we think always uh, in a way that he wrote stuff. But today I would like to invite you to think how Timothy would have received that letter. Imagine with me that Paul is in prison. And when Timothy was there and he received a letter from someone that he loved as his father in faith. Wow, it's a letter from Paul. That's awesome. It's for me. But then things quite didn't pay out as he expected or the letter didn't say or actually said a lot more than he could expect on that moment because sometimes that's life right we expect something and things happen in a different way a couple of weeks ago i was on my way or last week actually i was on my way to america to an advanced conference in New Jersey. And a lot of things were different from what we expected on that trip. But one of them was British Airways. When I was on, on the airport going to America, I just stand on a queue for two hours to send my luggage. And then another two hours on the x-ray. And then I finally got on a plane just to know that they had overbooked the plane and that I didn't have a seat. I said, how is that possible? I'm almost using two seats now. And you are saying that I, I don't have one. And they put me in one. Finally, when I got there, they said, you don't have a seat for the next flight either. I said, oh, that's a common thing now. And they made me stay in the queue for another two and a half hours to finally get a seat. But it was amazing. I got, you know, it was almost business class. So I, I, I had this... Uh, yeah, glass, cup of water, and everything was amazing. And I was so joyful that finally I had an upgrade in life. And I was there, seated, you know, just two seats on the corner, this lady by my side, and I was trying to be helpful. So I said, would you like me to put your luggage, you know, on the bean? And she said, no. I said, I will help you anyway. And when I was leaving my seat, at the same time, the flight attendant was coming with a tray full of juice, coffee, champagne, and all of that. My head hit the tray. And everyone else seated on that side had a shower of juice and water and coffee. And then people look at me and said, what is going on? I said, I was trying to help. She said, I didn't ask help. Actually, I said I didn't want it. I said, no, but I was trying to help. And this flight attendant was so mad. She looked at me and said, Oh, please don't do anything else. I said, okay. And I was there saying, Lord, I just want this flight to go. And I just want, you know, no one to pay attention. So I didn't touch the seat. I was there quiet on the middle of the flight. I had this idea. I'll put my seat back because, you know, and I'll have this amazing time. So things didn't quite work as I expected. So I pressed the button and put my force back. But I didn't realize the lady on the back seat was eating and with a lot of drinks and food, you know. So the chair just made a big noise, blah! And all her food went on her and on the floor and the drinks everywhere. And she shouted, he broke the seat! Then I said, I didn't. She said, you did. I said, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. She said, just put the seat back. And the same flight attendant came back. What did you do this time? I said, I don't know. Was the chair? I said, no, it's you. I said, no, it's the chair. So I put the chair back and I was just saying, Lord, please. I don't want to upgrade anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, at least when I go in the back class, I, uh, I don't do anything stupid. But Lord, what is going on? And this lady on my side just said, tough day, huh? I said, yeah, it's not what I was expecting. And she said, Life never is what we expect. And then she started to share her story. And her husband, a year before that, uh, he retired and they had so many plans together. And he got ill and he died. And she was sharing with me, she's saying, you know what? We make plans, but things doesn't happen. I said, are you a believer? She said, I am. 
And we were having the rest of the flight talking about how sometimes we expect things to happen in a certain way or develop in a certain way and quite doesn't have the same thing. When Timothy received that letter, I can imagine his joy opening, you know, and saying, now I will hear what Paul is trying to say to me. And then he starts to read here in 2 Timothy chapter 4. From verse 1, he starts to see when Paul wrote, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. And then he continues to say that his life was being prepared and was pouring out as a, he had a, a good life. He fought a good fight and he was ready. And I can imagine Timothy reading that and saying, wow, Paul is dying. He's in prison. He knows he's going. That's not quite what I was expecting to receive from a letter. That is not quite what I was expecting to receive as this message from someone that I love. But then, in my mind, he just starts to read again. And that's what we do when we read something that we don't quite understand or like. Or something that is not quite what we expected. Like that flight when I, that keep passing my mind again and again. That poor flight attendant hating me now forever. But... He started to read it again and then we need to unveil what actually Paul was writing to him and how he received it. And again, these words stand. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead? Preach the word. He was giving a commission. He is giving a charge. He was giving a direct order. Preach the word. But to fully understand how Timothy received that, we need to jump a little bit in how Paul wrote and the word he wrote. Because our Bibles will translate as, I give you this commission or this charge or this command. But the word used here, go and preach and I give you this charge, is the Greek word diarmatorumai or whatever Portuguese, English, Greek sounds like. And this word was also used in front of the judge. When a judge was about to give a sentence to someone that would send this person to jail or to pay something. And you had a proof that would save this person of that uh, consequence. You could come before the judge and say, I give you this charge. The arma torumai. I have something that will save this person's life. And then Paul used exactly the same word that people would know that was used in front of the judge saying, Hey, Timothy, understand this. Your sermon, your message, your gospel, the way you communicate the gospel of Jesus to the world will save people's lives for the whole eternity. That's how he understood. But are we understanding in the same way today? Do we still have the same passion for the lost? Because or we have a passion for the lost or we have a lost passion. Because we get so good and entertaining sometimes that we don't have the same passion for the lost. And we forget that actually our preaching will save people's lives. Not just here but forever. For the whole eternity. And we get so good in debating what is love or what is this, is there hell, is there not hell, that we forget the only thing that saves people 
from an eternity without God. That is called Jesus Christ. The Savior of our souls. And he said to his son in faith, someone that he loved, on the last letter that he would write, he was in jail. Not just in jail, he was in a dungeon. And he wrote to him and said, preach. Don't forget that. Preach. Save people from an eternity without God. Preach. Because that makes a difference. That changes the world. And that changes the person's lives forever and ever and ever. I had a very clear understanding of this. One of the last times that I was in Kenya. And I was preaching in a tribe that never received Jesus before. They never had the gospel. They never had a church or anything. And I was on this tribe. And my translator was so excited that we were there. And he said, Louis, there is only one problem. If they don't accept Jesus, they might come and beat us up. I said, it's not a problem. Let's keep preaching. He came and he said, look. He started to cry and not just cry. He started to wailing and he said, wow, if Jesus is the only way to God. I want him. I want Jesus. I want that. And he was crying. He said, I want this Jesus. I want this Jesus. And I was crying more than him because I wouldn't be beaten anymore. And, and, and he was accepting Jesus. And I was so happy. And then he stopped and looked at me and said, but what happened to my father that died last year? No one ever came to share the gospel with him didn't use these words, but that's what he said. No one ever came. And he looked at me and said, why you didn't come before? Why someone that you know never came to share the gospel? Because if my father had heard, he would have received it. And I don't want to get on the theology of what happened. That's not the case today, but that... That made me cry so much. And I was like, wow. The only thing I can say is that I don't want ever to stop going or helping the church to go. Man, do you understand that what you do matters? Do we have the same passion, guys? Do we have the same passion? Like John Wesley once put all his preachers in front of him. And John Wesley looked at them and said, guys, I'll make very sure you understand. You have one job in life. Save souls. That's it. Go and save souls. Don't get so distracted leading a church or a movement or these or you're with Excel spreadsheet or something else that you forget that whatever you do here matters. Matters. Because we'll save people from an eternity without God. I don't want to hear... People crying more saying, why? Why? I want to see people listening to the words of Jesus. John Bunyan was in jail for 12 years, guys. And every night, this jail man would come and say, look, every time you preach, things happen, people change. So you'll be in prison until you agree to not preach anymore. And if you say you're not going to preach, we'll release you. And Joe Bunyan that wrote the Pilgrim Progress said, if you release me now, I'll be preaching very, very soon with the grace of God. Because that's who I am, not what I do. I share Jesus. He brought us from darkness to light to share his virtues. Guys, that's what we should do. John Bevere, in one of his books, Moved by Eternity, he says this, that one day when we are before God, before his throne, in light of Jesus, we will be remembered or, or we will need to be accountable for the generation that is around us. And that is on my mind every day. I said, God, I don't want to be on that day before you more concerned with a lot of things that I did. But I forgot that actually I was in the middle of a generation that I had responsibility with and to preach the word, guys. I had four more points to do today, but I, I'll finish here. I'll continue this message another time. But I would like us to pray. There is no revival that never happened with people wailing for lost souls. Crying for people. But this cry is not a produce of, I'm sad because I heard a message. 
or I'm sad because of that flight attendant that had to cope with Louis. Th that's not because of that. That cry is the result of a broken heart, knowing that people will spend an eternity without the Savior. That the only way to be saved is to be in relationship with Jesus. And that I have my role to play, I have my part to do. And I get distracted, guys. I don't know about you, but I get distracted with jobs, with payments, with crisis of living and all that. And that's all valid. But the only thing that saves is the message of the cross, is Jesus. I don't want to get lost in that. Today, we have a commission. We have a call. We have a charge. We have a reminder from Jesus saying, what you do here matters. Go and preach. It's not saying go to the pulpit and preach. Go and preach. Go and make a difference. Send that text message. Start to pray for people. And that will bring difference. We will change the world that way. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we accept your charge, your commission, your call. I had so much more to say, but thank God I don't. I think that's what you want to say, Jesus, and that's enough. Start in me, Lord, today, I pray, Lord, restore the passion for the lost. Restore the goal to go and share that Jesus is the reason, that Jesus is our hope, that Jesus is the only way to God, that Jesus is God. Forgive us, Lord, for every time that we get so distracted with everything else, even good stuff, Lord. But it's becoming a barrier to allow you to be expressed to the world and proclaimed as the Lord and Savior of our souls. If for some reason the passion is just going away, Lord, we pray today. In Jesus' name, restore the passion that we have for you and for the lost. We can't have one without the other. Loving you will lead us to love others. Having passion for you will lead us to share with others. Remind us that what we do matters. And save people, Lord, from eternal separation. So today... We give our hearts and minds to you. Remove from us, Lord, everything that just is killing the passion for you and for the lost. And allow us to have this urgency. Lord, put this urgency in our hearts. We don't want to hear like that on that tribe, Lord. Why? Why no one came? But we want to be the people that see salvation spreading through all the earth. Receive us, Lord, as a living offering to you. And restore your heart in us. In Jesus' name we pray. You've been watching Message Live. And we hope it's been a great encouragement to you. Would you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook. And ring that bell for notifications. And thanks for watching.